get Fuck it, get my feelings baking now Sick of negativity, they hit me with the run around I'm running down, went to chase the bag Cause I want it now, one thing is for certain Them niggas is lurking, my niggas that hurt you For nothing, get my shooters is working I gotta keep progressing cause this stress gon' leave me to death, it ain't no question I'ma hustle till nothing is left Work up early morning, smoke my Dutch and make my way to school Wasn't focused trying to get it, I was making moves For the love of the money I was breaking rules, I was trying to win I just hate to lose I hear him talking, I ain't worried about him Cause the shit that's on my hip and knock the words out of Uh, couldn't see that they want no problem Name a nigga how this me, y'all no problem I say two to my religion and assassinate the competition While elaborating how I wouldn't got them in their feelings Yeah, we celebrating popping bottles with a squiz of women You fucking with his name, but back then you ain't see the vision Separation may be best, just know it's complicated Corporation to the death, you cannot duplicate it We gon' keep on shitting on them like we defecated All this fucking money's with it, all these niggas had to hate it Yeah, y'all, the world is ours, man I'ma break this shit in half and make sure I share everything with you Keep rocking with your old chicks, you know what it is, Lord, bro They ain't fucking with us, this corporation for life Aristocratic gang, block knowledge, man Who want it with us? I'm ready Oh, yeah Ain't in the water to put the fire out All the death that I seen brought my desire out Y'all niggas are stupid, hit in a lion mouth from this war and fuck them, I blow up the whole entire house Streets tell me I'm the one that can change the game These other niggas nice, but I'm the king of pain All my energy alone, I do amazing things Like save the game, Obama to the hood, I'ma make a change I'm a mix of the future and the old days Watch Philly bomb drop on low stage Dark nights, hard blocks, cold days Street, fat, black, old days. I'm getting new money like the old days. Aaron Jones, fresh in the hand bone. Trunk full of white girl, call her Sharon Stone. God bless the child that can hold his own. Now I'm with the cover of the Rolling Stone. Trying to get this money cause a nigga grown. I'm still resort, fucking hella bitches. I can smell a chicken. This is television. God gave me the gift for shit, tell fit it. Capo, I'm the leader of the underdogs. And fuck rappers, I'm talking to every one of y'all. If y'all open the doors, we running through the walls. I'm the leader of the gang, shooter the underboss. Corporation for life, nigga, we want it all. We about to kill a game like a homicide. Watch fully drive by, spray you off a yacht. Yes, welcome to NR International. You now in tune with the goon, so make sure that you come floss with a boss. NR International, Mr. Make It Rain, Nor Rainy, and Flawless Blood, Peace Love. Peace Love. My, oh my, what another week that we have just got through. Indeed, indeed. Yesterday, we had. A gathering of bosses coming to the table to sure. change up a lot of the injustices that's going on in the state of PA right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had, um, and what I'm talking about for those who don't know, we're talking about. Let them know what it is. Let them know what it is. We're talking about the prison reforms. We're talking about the social injustices and how many man. We're talking about. We're talking about everything that pretty much has been started for the past year now dealing with the Meek Mill issue starting with the Meek Mill issue so I definitely salute and stand behind it because I myself was also one of the people who had to go through those same type of issues and made my way home 
So we're talking about left. social reforms. Mm -hmm. We're talking about <laughs> making sure that people have the chance to come home and and start life over the right way. Indeed, you know, I think that it's just ridiculous that a mistake that you can make as a child, as an adolescent, you know, you are kind of like held accountable for your entire life as if people don't grow, evolve and change and develop. So. Yeah, I mean, really, that's what it is right now. It's like there's been so many different laws that's been written in the books and based off of those lot those those I was about to say lies those absurd laws those laws is kept a lot of people down and i mean systematically of course yeah i mean it's it's like right now in the state of pa we have way over 32 different penitentiaries and so the majority of people who come into these the majority of all of the population of all of these jails are philadelphians Mm -hmm. people who come from the city of Philadelphia now and it's like of course if we look at the population I'm looking at the fact that Philly is the second largest East Coast city after New York and most of the populated it's still the fact remains that we gotta do better we, we it's, it's like yeah. we have to do better it's, it's, it's mandatory because I mean there's people who's, who's wrongly accused wrongly incarcerated wrongfully convicted mm -hmm. and they're doing time based off of that part alone mm -hmm. and then you have the fact that after they try to make it home such as the case with meek mill which is obviously being seen internationally mm -hmm. that once you make it home even though it was a bogus charge you still held accountable for the next 10 15 20 years Mm -hmm. on probation on parole trying to walk it off and they won't let you and talking about being on probation right uh-huh we both know being philadelphians you know mm -hmm. how heavy the police flood these streets and so for you or for one to be on parole and knowing that if you have any type of police contact at all, you will go back regardless as to what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just a little ridiculous. It's, it's a setup waiting to happen. To be honest, it's a trap. Hey, listen, that's not the only trap. See, it's like I've, I've been listening. I've been standing behind the situation since it began. Like I've been I've been at the rallies, you know, the free meat mill rallies and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Not because of the individual, but because of what it stands the for. Mm -hmm. And what it stands for is I can say personally that when you come home and you have even a few more dollars than the rest of the people who might be even working the halfway houses that you might be in, it's going to be some type of envy where they don't want to send you back. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to being in a, in, a, in a situation of being looked over by a PO, this PO may have a miserable life living with a miserable wife <laughs> and he tries to make your life miserable because misery loves company because misery loves company and so therefore what that means is that the i'm gonna say this the laws right mm -hmm. for my outlook and you know of course i'm not a perfect person you know what I'm saying? so correct me when i'm wrong so you know anybody and everybody can always speak up when if i'm saying something wrong but from my perspective I've always seen that the laws were meant to actually be right, but it's the people in position that makes them wrong. It's the wrong, it's the wrong understanding and the wrong application of the laws upon people that causes for them to be caught up in situations that's, I mean, eh, eh. I'm gonna add my two cents. Add your two cents, of course like so um first off like the penitentiary and, and and the jail systems weren't even really created until after mm -hmm. the slaves are free and so mm -hmm. when you say like the laws are are kind of no not the way that i view it is it's all bogus and fugazi you know there's the laws of the land and there are treaties and and that of which are fair are um meant for 
the betterment of all, you know, for all of us to coexist with one another. However, these laws in which we live by as of today's society, mm -hmm. I don't feel as though they're conducive. They're very oppressive. <laughs> like, you know, they're, they're it's, it's designed systematically to keep you in a, a ferret will. So you said, you know, a trap to keep going in circles and going in circles for the cycle to continue. Um, so I'm glad that we are finally bringing, and this is just a issue of many that we have, but it has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say, see, I'm going to say from this point of view, right? The first part, I don't believe in jails, <laughs> period, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe that when it comes down to an animal supposed to be caged. I don't. I believe an animal supposed to be kept free. Yeah. So I'm gonna say off of that part that Even basic, serial killers. <laughs> listen, there's ways to deal with that. There's ways, ways to deal with that. There's ways to deal with that. Yeah, like, but some, some in, in some cases, right? And I'm not a person who pretty much says that it should be. Um, for all cases, it's supposed to be some type of. It's supposed to be some type of corporal punishment, but I mean, some people put themselves in predicaments, right? Mm -hmm. Where they end up, um, they pretty much say that they are a waste of life, right? Now, I'm not saying that this isn't a case of of, of social engineering for some people, but. There's ways to help people, and if you can't help them, then I would say that the last thing you want to do is stick them in a box. Don't hinder them. Like the <laughs> last thing you want to do is stick them no, in a box and, and just have them. I mean, I'm speaking from I'm speaking from a personal level, right? Mm -hmm. I've watched people get their souls knocked out their body, their willpower knocked out their body. Once they get hit with that elbow, once they get hit hit with that. Oh, you are now sentenced to, to no. There's no more twenty five to life. Like I mean, New York had twenty five to life, but when it comes down to PA, PA means natural life, which means if you end up choking on a chicken bone and you die and they resuscitate you and you come back, you still gotta finish that time off in the penitentiary. That's corny though. Like, listen, I had died already, so like, <laughs> technically I checked. Let me out of here. Till the you know what I'm saying y'all got life. Y'all got one life. Now that I woke up and I'm alive, let me live my other life. Can I live the best life? No, they don't want us to live our best life. They definitely don't want us to live our best life. But the thing is that it's like from the outs from from the outside looking in, people look at I mean people look at the penitentiary as warehousing. Like, okay, well, you know, they're okay. They're in there. They're safe. They're no, it's not it's not safe. No, it's not just it's not just I just went in at this particular time in my life and then I just came back the same person. Because what happens is that every moment that you spend anywhere and some people say, you know, as far as psychologically, if you've been around certain elements for four over four years, then you become attached to those things. So it's like if you a person who may have went in for let's say you was a juvenile you went in for the for the uh the stealing of a car mm -hmm. right and you just so happened to be um you came home on probation but then you caught another case now already you have a strike against you and then they're looking at you as oh you're already a criminal offender mm -hmm. and so the law and this is what i mean by when i say the law is supposed to work for you such as when you go in front of a when you go in front of a, a grand jury it's not supposed to be allowed for them to bring up your past history right and this is one example they're not supposed to bring up your past history bef before they get to talking about what is the, the verdict on this particular case mm -hmm. they don't do that they definitely do what they, they pull want up, they pull up your, your, your past and say well this is the things that make some be considered as a criminal even as a juvenile and so what happens is that the law says one thing but what goes on in the courtroom is another 
And then for a person who has to fight the case, they have to fight their way out of the paper bag. You, they already stuck in the system, and they got to fight their way out of there. And if you don't got the resources to fight, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like you you shadow boxing. You fight in the air, and you're not hitting nothing. Because the powers that be are already saying, well, you've been tried mm-hmm. according to this or according to that. And according to what we say, the laws are, are meant to be fair. And so the only way this is going to change is if you change the law. But it wasn't the case of the of the law. It was the case of the people who judged you. It was the case of the misinterpretation or the allowance of something that the DA may have done. And we've known a lot of DAs that have been brought up on BS. Shiesty. You know, even right now, there's people who are wrongfully accused within the penitentiaries who have been placed there that should be out already by fruits of a poisonous tree because the cops, the police, the cops, the police, that the evidence, locked them up matched, have right? already been indicted. Mm-hmm. How about that? So, in 2000, what was it? In 2013, there was one indictment that a lot of people, a lot of people recognized about, what was this, five or six different police officers in the city of Philadelphia. But then right after that, the, the year right after that, there was another set of cops that was indicted. Like, we can go back dealing with cop indictments for years. I mean, from the time I was growing up. But the thing is, it's supposed to be fruits of a poisonous tree. But what happens is that once you in, it's hard to get out. And that's what we were seeing with the Meek Mill situation. We were seeing in front of everyone's, in, in everyone's eyes, everyone who were paying attention to the status quo of who Meek Mill is, the fame of who Meek Mill is, the entire world got a chance to see, well, it's not supposed to work like that. And so, thank God, we have one foot forward. We're not going to say it's a, it's a complete victory because I think a lot of things still has to happen. Starts with the first step. But it is a first step. Starts with the first step. We have... Uh, the coal. It was mentioned that the coal owner of the 76ers has joined up and has. Michael um, Rubin. Yeah. Yes, he's he's given up um, millions. As well as project. the Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Exactly, and it's like. This and Jay Z. And Jay Z. This is what's needed. Definitely. It's like. You won't catch Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 know, he, 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 he has, he has shares. Yeah, he, he has shares. He ain't even gonna bring his shoe prices down, all right? So. Yeah, <laughs> but no, what she's talking about is, is Michael Jordan has shares in the prison system. I'm aware. Mm-hmm. So it's like, aware. see, this the thing that the entire world gotta have to understand is that this nation has been run off the backs, off of the backs of. The, well, no we, need to say no more. Y'all know what gonna, it is. Like we gonna say slaves first. Know. We're going to say slaves first, and then when the industry of changed... us and our ancestors. When the industry changed, it became... The indigenous. Blacks and Latinos. Mm-hmm. The majority of people who are in jail, and anyone who has who, who says no, prove me wrong. That the majority of people who are within the penitentiary system are blacks and Latinos. Also, guys, like, listen. And not due to, not due to the fact that we are just inherently bad. No, no, no. We are not inherently bad. We're inherently great. And that Amazing. might be a problem. Phenomenal. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many people that's locked up and they can't get out. So let's go to the first. Oh, hold up. Listen, I just wanted to let everyone know who is listening that you guys can call in. If you guys have an opinion, if you want to be heard. And you know what I'm saying we we definitely want to be interactive with absolutely our, our our audience. So tune in. Let, let let us know what you think. These are our stories. Mm-hmm. These are our opinions. So challenge us. Challenge us. Talk to part. us. Yeah. Add some of the stories. Some of the people who, if you got a cousin, an uncle, a brother who's locked up in the penitentiary, let us know your experience. Let us know because right now, a community, a society can be judged by way of the smallest people on their totem pole. And within this, within America, the lowest class of people have always been 
either the people who were considered as slaves, but now those who are considered as the convicted. Which is another terminology for slavery, just to let you know. So whichever manner the people who are considered as being convicts, whatever state that they're in, then that's what the rest of the country is based off, meaning most of the people are having a sixth grade education that's locked up. Or less. Most people, yeah. most people have been sent there due to the school to prison pipeline. How about that? And and the fact that funding is being taken away from schools constantly, but it's always cycling back into the jail systems. This shit, it was like, set up so we can't get out. And on, that, and on that note, let's go to locked up. <laughs> Akon. Welcome back to NR International. It's Mr. Make a Rain, Law Rainy, and Flawless Flaw, Peace Love. We were just talking to about. <laughs> so, the reform, you know what I'm saying? The Reform Alliance called the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Definitely appreciate Meek Mills and Jay Z. Also, Bellevue Strategies for helping move in this. Salute. You did? Uh huh. We were just talking about how this system that we that, that we have considered as a judicial a, just a judiciary system it need it was in need of a reform like we had to change it like I mean you have people even right now who they've been incarcerated and was given a two and a half to five year sentence. And with that two and a half to five year sentence, it means they're supposed to have two and a half years to do on parole once they come home. Now the case is that a lot of people don't understand, and this is something in which I've also seen that hasn't been spoken about. The courts, if you catch, say for instance, any type of violation such as a, um, a um, the police officers, just having contact with you then what happens is that they can bring you back in front of the parole board they can bring you back in front of your judge if you caught a case if you beat the case he can still start your time with you, which means you could have been off for the last month you had say again if you had a two and a half to five and you had two and a half to do you just went through the whole two years you only had six months to go and they say well, guess what? Because they investigated you for this, let's give you another two and a half years. And start your time all over. Stop watch. Yeah, right. So like, you got people who's been walking off parole, walking off probation, state initiated probation, right? It's a difference. For the they've been walking that off for the past ten years. I know someone's been doing it for long. And it's, and it's crazy. It's like, how can we are a city of, of 1.6 million people, and we just we just talking about Philly right now. 1.6 1. 1. million people. Out of 1.6 million people, you have 85 percent of the hood all on paper, all all either just getting off of parole and going into probation, or just on probation. That's an out of pocket, uh, out of pocket stereo uh, statistic. So it's like the reality. Now we gotta we gotta understand, and and this is why I was saying before, like when it comes down to certain places, we can't just say we can't we can't just tag certain things onto people, right? And say because you committed this heinous act of, of crime called murder right mm-hmm. we're going to give you we're going to take we're going to give you a, a life sentence and we're going to take your life away um 
Wait, not to mention that these are once these, you're in prison, they take your life away are, anyway. Because once you come home, your life is never the same as far as getting jobs, I'm absolutely, like getting exactly. harassed. It's not, they take your life away at that moment. But this is this is the thing, and this is the point that I want to get to, even in regards to that. Everything's supposed to have some type of reasoning behind it, and so as if a person is a judge, how many times have you based off? Because we have state guidelines we have criminal sentencing guidelines which means that even if it was a case of self-defense a judge still has to sentence you to a certain amount of time crazy i mean and this is why i'm saying like a person can sit there and say and place it in the papers like murder or homicide or manslaughter or even reckless and dangerous. Yeah. Like these are Pretty all nice things thing. in which in the public light, in the public eye, people listen to these things and, and say, Oh, this was committed. He gotta go to jail for this amount of time. But is that actually fair? If it's the case in which listening to, to people's uh li- listening to people's testimonies, they might say, Man, this person been trying to say, stop my stop my wife run up in my house, do this, do that, take my money, and I just so happened to be able to get the upper hand on him when he came at me first. And still, and still with that, there's people who do seven and a half to twenties off of cases just like that. And it's like, can it be considered as their fault? I mean, actually listening to the stories, the, 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 the things that if a person was to sit, sit, them, sit down in front of you and say, listen, I sold drugs. I come from a, from a drug dealing household. But the reason why is because y'all locked my father away for life. <laughs> I didn't have no father. And my mother was struggling and I was struggling. The bills, and we had, And I have four other siblings and all around me all around me is nothing but drugs and drug and and and, and drug eats, addicts mm-hmm. so i mean we can't say that it's going to be a case of if you're around the wolves you're going to cluck like a chicken or you're going to bad like the sheep we're going to say like if you're in a certain environment can the law i'm not saying it's, it's not going to be the same thing as a person who's living out in say for instance in montgomery county or bucks county or 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 any or delaware county or any other counties in which we're talking about rural areas you know what i'm saying not the cities but we're talking about the places where it goes down at is there any type of leniency on the people who are um subjected to their environments like well I've worked. Mm-hmm. I've worked at local juvenile centers, and the majority of kids come in there because of one. We shut down so many different schools in the city of Philadelphia that now these kids are going outside of their neighborhoods into other neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to say kids not going to fight, especially when it comes down to oh, well, you was fighting my man's in them. So now you putting you putting these kids at risk of going to jail, right? Because they're going to other and it's you know I'm again I'm not a, a person saying that it can't be peace, but we have to work on those things within our own communities first. But at the same time, once it gets to the system and the system gets their hands on it, it's like these kids are going to jail because they're fighting at schools or fighting outside the schools and things happen so that begins their criminal record and then that criminal record can't get expunged because most of the time once they're in the system they ha- they stay in the system talking about kids specifically and fighting right uh-huh you know that um i think it's ironic that whenever a uh, Caucasian person commits a crime, Mm -hmm. whether it be shooting a school or some terrorist shit, um, Mm -hmm. they plead insanity, temporary insanity, Mm -hmm. or, oh, I needed this, right? But exactly what you were saying, the the, the fighting starts young. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so if a child is fighting, why is it? Is it their behavior or is it emotional? You know, mm -hmm. I think that mental illness and just therapy, period, is so swept under the rug. It's so not talked about within our community mm -hmm. that if we did spend the time, because we are the ones who have been oppressed for centuries. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who deal with trauma on a psychological level, on a spiritual level, on, on a genetic level. And so we were not properly taught how to understand our own feelings and properly digest them to know how to coexist with each other. Mm -hmm. So when it's so much dysfunction, this is when you can tie it back to, okay, well, he snapped. Maybe it was a mental breakdown. You know, maybe that this is not who he is or of his character, but this is what he's going through. Last show I said, you know, it was a time that I didn't represent my highest self. Mm -hmm. And I understand and I can relate to those who may be vibrating a little uh, uh, low on their frequency or doing things that just we don't understand. But it's not for us to judge. And even when it comes to the judges in the system, right, follow me, they were kids, and now they're young men and boys who even though they're not of age to get charged as adults they still do um the judges we're supposed to be judged amongst our peers mm -hmm. nobody is our peers and when we go to trial and and, and we don't see no one of us mm -hmm. no one to understand because mm -hmm. much of what we said i understand you because i come from mm -hmm. a lot of other Outsiders, a lot of people who have control systematically, they just don't. They, it's a disconnect. It's a disconnect. They're gonna, they're gonna look at it and say, "Well, no. No matter where you are, you're supposed to go by the same laws of the land. Or well, no matter where you, where you are, you're, you're supposed to be." And then they're gonna say their, their version of reality, mm -hmm. the reality in which they live. But it's not the same. And I, and I challenge anybody, come on down to K and A. And I bet you I'll show you a different reality mm -hmm. than you've ever seen. But that was something that, again, Meek was uh, speaking to amongst, amongst one of the people on the board of, of, of this new reform, saying mm -hmm. the two different Americas. And um, excuse me for the, the lack of following the, uh, the name, but he was like, there's no two Americas. There's mm -hmm. no two Americas. But it took for what happened to Meek to happen, for the guy to acknowledge, wow, there's two different kind of Americas. There's two different Americas. Yes, live in the same place, mm -hmm. treated completely different. And the, experiences this, are completely different. The same thing within, and he was talking to, he was actually talking to um, the co-owner of the Sixers when he said that. Um, you can live within the same city, so. right? Yeah, you can live within, I mean, a person who lives in, for instance, Chestnut Hill. Right doesn't have the same reality as somebody who lives in the heart of the badlands a person who well, lives in in you know for instance in um in in maniunk doesn't have the same reality as a person who lives in mantua right mm -hmm. so it's like these realities are real and poverty levels poverty levels and also the 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 environment as well as the, the structure of family plays a very integral part in making who an individual is. I definitely agree. It is the experience and the environment in which molds a person to become who they are. Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say, these are the things that from the very beginning, right? When we're talking about the judicial system, the reason why the judicial system doesn't work for us it was never meant to. It it's was never designed to work exactly. for us. And exactly. I think it's back fact. When... <laughs> listen, listen. I think that was enough about this topic. We, we, we got to get the DK news. What you think? I really think that this is, this is a, a mm -hmm. very intense topic. This is a very passionate topic for me. For sure, I see. And, the reason, and again, the reason why is because... Tell them why, tell them why. I had to spend over 13 years of my life it's like half your life exactly over 13 years of my life in the penitentiary right from the age of a teenager from the age of a teenager and it's like 
even right now. I'm rebuilding my life. I'm rebuilding everything which was considered as lost. All because of not taking anything away from what part I played. No, I'm not saying anything in regards to that. But saying, I knew even back then what I wanted to do when I came home. I knew that it was my I it was in my heart to be an entrepreneur. I knew that I needed to be a person who would still do what I was known to do, which is I'm going to still take care of the people around me. And I knew the route in which I wanted to do it. And so the time that I did was stopped on many levels simply because of the judgment of PA's probation and parole board. It was stopped because of, even when it comes down to issues of residence. I have a lot of opportunities and had a lot of opportunities in which a lot of people didn't have. One of them was to be able to not come into the heart of the drama zone. They didn't allow me to get that um, interstate compact. The other state agreed. PA didn't. Why? These are things that people face. Realities that people face. You want to leave to start over and rebuild. They don't let you. What did they, what did they do? They put me on Germantown and Lehigh. First week there, ball get his head blown off in the half these are realities that people live through and live he with. He was not associated I'm not, yeah. with that. Just, just to make it clear to the, make, to the listeners. To clear. He, wasn't, yeah. he wasn't associated with that. But these are the things in which are realities that people have, people have to live through, right? And even after that, just from getting, getting yourself established, like I've always... I started in our management and promotion from the halfway house because I already had my, my business plan. I already knew my business strategy. I already knew what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, how much the startup cost was going to be, and had the people that were willing to help. Long story short, one of the infamous agents that was known um, within the city of Philadelphia who had to resign, tried his best to send me back on numerous occasions. Tried to bury you under. All because he didn't like me. He didn't like a lot of people. But these are again, things in which people, people don't gotta, like themselves. People, people who are on parole, people who are on probation, they have to go through and it's like, it's not really dealing with, and that's why I say it's not really dealing with the law because as a law abiding citizen, I have no problem with it. I'm gonna take a piss. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I, you need, how many more pisses you need? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it comes down to, okay, uh, do you need me to take care of um, you all pay your taxes. You a tax. Yeah. Taxes. Do you need me to work? Take take care of all my compensation funds and all of the everything that comes along with even being um, being observed and 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 being underneath the authority of the parole board. You gotta pay. You gotta you gotta give them portions of your check while you working in halfway houses, right? You gotta you gotta pretty much. It's everything is about money. And. The, this is the one thing that we didn't get to. Why is it that had I not come home to establish my own business, and had I, say for instance, not been able to get a job, and I fell underneath the situation of being, uh, for instance, a welfare recipient, how much would I get as an individual for welfare? I will only get about, at most, Ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars, and I'm and and that's that's <laughs> that's the most, right? You saying annually? Annually. Huh? 
Run that bad woman's out. Annually? Annually, you do not receive, unless you got kids, you do not receive. And you got to remember, it's coming off, you know, they taking care of, you know, you got your health, you mess around, get your health partners and all of that. Which, once again, listen, bring to their attention that they are shutting it down. Uh-huh. But by way of your, your, your wick, mm-hmm. you know, your food stamps and all of that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to receive, you're not going to receive that much money. But guess what? You do anything to get locked up. Now, this is dealing with the re-entry program, the re-entry issues. Like, we talked about the reason why people are going to jail. Like, we need to really look into that. But we also need to look at when people are coming home, mm-hmm. what do you have lined up for them? Because if they do anything to go back, what you're telling me is that if you can only give me, if I chose to, to use welfare, $12,000, which is pretty much minimum wage, right? Not last year. Lesser. You're telling me that if I do anything to go back to jail, in jail, I'm worth to the state $45,000. Approximately, yeah. You paying the the taxpayers are paying the state forty five thousand dollars for every inmate per year mm-hmm. to live inside the penitentiary. So tell me, that's the point. They make more money off of you exactly. in custody in it's prison about the pay- than they do off the streets. This is a business. Listen, well, forty five thousand in my hands. <laughs> you won't have a habit to see Listen, me. Listen, I'm gonna give you an ROI. Okay, I will give you a return on your investment if you Absolutely. put forty five in my hand. Let's talk business. Absolutely. But, um, and that's only, and that's dealing with, you know, looking at it as an investment. Mm-hmm. But they don't do that, though. USA is, is an entire corporation in itself. Mm-hmm. I hope y'all heard that. Yeah. And the veins of that corporation. A. The veins of the corporation that keeps, that keeps the finances running. The penitentiary system. Mm-hmm. From the commissary to the phone. Even Apple got ties into it because what? <laughs> the, the kiosks and everything is, is now becoming digital. Even when it comes down to, even when it comes down to, to to your letters, now people aren't even receiving real letters anymore. So everybody Connect is getting inmates. paid from the inmates except for the inmates and their families. And. and- Definitely, let's take a moment of silence for all those who are affected, not only the inmates, but their families. Like, Mm -hmm. this affects millions on millions of people because it's not just the one that's away that's being affected. It's their son, their daughter, their wife, their girlfriend, their mom, their aunt, their brother, their uncle, their cousin, their sister. Like, the list goes on, and it's it's too big. It's too big. And everyone is hurting from this one experience. My thing is, it's so many reasons that we can all uh, uh, separate, but understand that this is how they win every time, by dividing and conquering. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. Based off of how this prison system works and the judicial system works, it's hard. To ask a person about do you have a family member and they live within the inner city do you have a family member that's not locked up you ask a person within the inner city you got somebody that's locked up you gonna say oh yeah my pop locked up all right my uncle locked up my mom locked up that's crazy that yeah, i can't i can't say that i don't so it's just that like that means the family structure never ha- even had a chance from from day one, from rather be from birth, from childhood, early childhood, or later adolescence. But that's how you conquer. You feel me? You, you you conquer by breaking that home structure apart by tearing it apart. If you and don't have you a family, if you if if there is no family nucleus, there cannot be. There cannot be a set of neighbors. There's no neighbors. There no can't community. be a neighborhood. Yep. If it can't be a neighborhood, it can't be a community. community can't be a community it can't be a society you can't have a society you can't have a nation you don't have a nation you don't have an empire so it begins with the family and that's one way of breaking the family structure down multiple ways imprisoning the fathers mm-hmm. um letting the the, the mothers fellas though oh, you don't need the man here here we'll give you money uh, oh but now what you're gonna do now that they take it away so we are screwed either way we'll be damned if we do damned if we don't I had a question. And what's your question? My question, I was going to ask a couple uh, episodes ago. But why is it that 
you know, we send our beloved children mm -hmm. to the oppressor to learn. Like, to, to learn from them. That, that's it. Well, the thing is, is, a lot of times people only do it out of routine. Mm -hmm. Because Tradition. there is no, there, there isn't something else established. Or easy babysitter. Yeah. See, now, nowadays people are getting hip to it, so people have the homeschooling. Yeah, but we're supposed to be our 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 children's first teacher, especially as a mother, mm -hmm. especially as a father. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm. But that's what it is, and that's what it should be, and hopefully people end up listening to this to this uh, this conversation, and at least may may something in this conversation spark a little fire that has set the rest of the world on ablaze, like. Call in. Let us hear. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We would love to know. So on that note, though, let's go on to the next, the next set of music, and then come back and go over the DK news. DK. DK. These niggas prayed on my downfall. Like what? These niggas prayed on my downfall. On R10, bitch, I stood tall. You did? Show these disloyal niggas how to ball. Go. Astro. Yeah. Sun is down, freezing cold. That's how we already know. When it's here, my dog will probably do it for Louis Bell. That's just all he know, he don't know nothing else. Welcome back to NR International. You're rocking with Mr. Mika Rain, Law Rainey, and Flawless Flaw. Peace love. <laughs> we just got done doing a very passionate, very passionate conversation. Heartfelt. Concerning incarceration. Stop the mass incarceration. Fix the judicial system. The Avengers of form, reform, you know? And let's make sure that we get these re-entry programs together. Because at the end of the day, as well as in the beginning of the day, Shout out people, Shelliana. when people come home, they need something to come home to. Mm -hmm. And if it's the case in which they may not have anybody there to help them, or no one there to assist them, then we already know that they're gonna end up going back to what they're used to. And we're not looking for that. We don't want that. We want people to become better human beings. We want people to be greater men and greater women. Evolve, develop, and grow. Those who benefit society. And so- Those who benefit one another. Absolutely. But the way how things are set up, as long as people are focused on the money and opposed from the heart and the character mm -hmm. then what's going to happen is that we're going to have a world of recidivism and this is the reason why even though we may do a lot to change the system the system feeds off of black men and black women and latino men and latino women and also caucasian men and caucasian women who fall underneath the same issues. Mm -hmm. And that's facts. Straight like that. And she <laughs> On that note. DK. We're going to go to DK News real quick. Let y'all know what's going on this week. Talk to him. So, y'all already know. It's your girl Flawless Flaw or whatever. And, um... I just wanted to see, did y'all know that there's a 27 year old man out here by the name of Christopher Cleary, who's a virgin, but that's, that's not neither here nor there. He was, <laughs> he was visiting um, Utah from Colorado and had posted a threatening Facebook status stating, <clears throat> excuse my, his voice. All right. Cause this is me. This is him in my head. Now he's saying, all I wanted was a girlfriend. <laughs> Not a thousand, not a bunch of holes, not a lot of money, none of that. I just wanted to be loved, yet no one cares about me. I'm 27 years old, I never had a girlfriend before, and I'm still a virgin. 
<clears throat> Excuse me, back to character, back to character. This is why I plan on shooting up a public place soon and being the next mass shooter because I'm ready to die. And all the girls that turn me down is going to make right by killing as many girls as I see. And there's nothing more dangerous than a man ready to die. <laughs> there's nothing more dangerous than a dickhead. <laughs> dickhead? Dickhead? <laughs> Oh my gosh, so after he went on that little rant or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yo, do you like, I was annoyed, like that voice was annoying to me. So I can imagine like, cause when I read that, that's how his voice sounded in my head. Like the, uh, the amount of things that we've endured in our life and he's gonna bitch and complain about this? My, okay, sorry. Anyway, back. Hey for something. Hey yo, it's people what? out here, like they got an uh, expiration date on it. So what's going on? What's going on on his Instagram? Yeah, I don't know, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? He's he's in custody. The bl- the police booked him, you know what I'm saying, in the in the Utah County Jail and he's being held without bail. So I'ma say free all the real and Keep- shuffle the freaks and the geeks. He's a geek. <laughs> Ew, this this is some people. Awkward. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But, um, back to the DK. DK. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I got an effed up sense of humor, right? Had to get myself together. So, Florida police officers, you know what I'm saying? They, they goes riding the whip and shit. Why is it that they ran over a couple? Yes, two people. They were 24, a male and a female. In Florida, while they were laying down in the middle, I don't, I don't know why they were in the middle of the road either but they were watching the the lunar eclipse you know oh. and got hit right. but it is my thing isn't it like <laughs> can you put cones around right. the I don't my thing is like you couldn't lay in the grass you couldn't lay on the pavement you wanted to lay on the road in the streets they did. no they injured but like <laughs> Are we gonna okay, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then why you ain't move? Cause like if That's like right. yeah. But listen, here's the thing. The police officer was supposed to be um patrolling the That's park crazy. going five miles an hour. My homie, how is it if you going five miles an hour? It's just not end up to me. That outside. you man, it be dark, but you still got headlights, you know what I'm saying? You ain't see them people he on the ground. He was, he was probably looking at the lunar eclipse too, like, oh, that joint is really brr, brr, brr. He, he probably was backing up and then, you know. I, I just, get well, you know what I'm saying? Just, just lay in the hammock or something. Well, can you imagine that he's backing up and then next thing you know, he, he oh, hold on, what's that? So he got John Fuller. That's still not, that's still not his fault though, because of my lean in his shit. Well, he don't think it's his fault either. The, 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 um, the police said, um, basically, they were ran over because they chose to lay. <laughs> Listen, you, what happened to you, right. happened to you because you uh-huh. chose to do that. And that's how we feel. So basically, I don't really think he's sorry. Like the way that the statement, it, it didn't come off really too apologetic. It was just like, uh, you did it to yourself. Yeah. Right. Why were you in the middle of the street? Like, <sighs> do you not know that traffic drives by every once in a while? Cars are meant for roads. Yeah. Pavements Not are meant for people. No. <laughs> you know? Like, I just... But anyway, 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 anyway. Back to the story. Back to the story. So, DK. DK. Mm-hmm. So it's said. So they say, um, due to Graves' disease, Wendy William would not be returning to any future shoes. Sorry. I hope you get better very soon. For those who do not know, Graves' disease is an autoimmune thyroid condition that affects approximately 1 in 200 people. Symptoms include anxiety, heat sensitivity, increased perspiration, weight loss, among others. I wonder that's why she lost that weight and everybody was teasing her. Um, I don't know what was really going on with her before this news, but I got this news for you. You know what I'm saying? And that stress ain't help with her husband trying to leave her during the, this time they need. Oh, see, so you got all the news, huh? You got the juice in the tea. You got the juice in the tea, oh, I, I, huh? I, no, I like how she's oh, going on people. It's just, you got to take better care of yourself. Period. First and too. foremost, self first, self last. 
uh, I was given some very good advice. Some advice that I'll never forget. Some advice that I utilize. Mm -hmm. It was told to me that nobody will do for you or treat you like you other than you. Not your mother, not your father, not your significant other, not your children, not your friends, not your homies. Nobody but you. So with that being said. Because everybody gonna need you. Mm -hmm. Self first, self last. But um, you know, definitely well wishes, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Get well soon. DK. DK. <laughs> Mexico pro neglectance. Pipeline blast that kills 91 people. Damn. RIP. 52 were wounded. And um, there's an investigation going on due to the neglect of, what else? Government officials, of course. Mm -hmm. But, um, ZK. ZK. Because they laying everybody over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, congratulations. You know what to uh, Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner. They just got married. Get them. So. He knew what he was running into a billion. <laughs> <laughs> so whomever, you know what I'm saying, cares for that. It's the best. Best, 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 best. But um less, but definitely not least. Mm -hmm. The quote of the day. No, one more DK. One more DK? Yes. What's the name DK? DK. I need everybody, every listener, oh. to tune in. Listen, okay? If y'all are not familiar with Brother Ben X or 19 Keys, they recently just launched Black On Demand TV. Wow. Exactly. This is huge. Like, this is phenomenal. If you can watch Netflix, if you can watch On Demand and Xfinity, turn, listen, 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 people, come together. They you have want an to app like Netflix and all that too. Get down with them. You can follow their Instagram, Brother Ben Next. Um, I believe it's nineteen underscore keys or nineteen keys. Let me give it. Let me give it to y'all right. I'm saying it's On Demand TV, and they are shifting the paradigm. They are definitely shifting the paradigm, man. Yeah, it's 19 underscore keys and Brother Bennett's Black On Demand dot TV. Uh huh. So if you already invest in On Demand TV, then hey, why not? It's Black On Demand. Let's get it. Mm hmm. That's true. But now, mm -hmm. we could definitely go into the quote of the day because I don't even know what it is. So, um, <laughs> enlighten us, please, would you? Well, I'm going to just say this simple fact. In this world, we have to have a lot of faith. So the faithful, unfortunately, get it the roughest. They, they got to be the toughest in tough times. So while we already know about all of these struggles that we as a people have to go through, I'll say this quote. This quote coming from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where it was said, verbally, this world is a prison for the faithful. And it is a paradise for those who care about nothing. Drop the mic. Yeah. Time to have a good yeah. heart makes you go through the most pain. Seriously. Because you see the reality of what's going on around you. And for those who don't care, they love all of this because mm -hmm. they don't care. Mm -hmm. They they care less about the struggles of the people. Mm -hmm. But the real, we're gonna always fight until we have freedom. Salute. Salute. This is NR International. And this for all this flaw. Peace, love. Make sure y'all tune in every Thursday at 5:30 p.m. 7 p.m. Get the best out of culture, entertainment, politics, community, and music in our international. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Signing off.
Central on 